condensed uh, 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 highlights of the Fermi liquid theory. So, so Fermi liquid theory is uh, very beautiful, very economical, and works very well. And also, um, Joe and Shankar, they found some effective field theory way to justify why the theory works. And uh, yeah, but nature always gave us a prize. And, uh, and uh, even though this time the surprise came a little bit late, say about 30 years after, say, the invention of the Fermi liquid theory. So, so since 1980s, people have discovered so-called non-Fermi liquids. So, so, so by definition, non-Fermi liquids are those uh, metallic states which don't really behave like a Fermi liquid, okay? So I think uh, Sansik have a very good phrase regarding the non-Fermi liquid. He said the definition of the non-Fermi liquid is to call everything which is not blender, non-blender, okay? <laughs> uh, and so, so non-Fermi liquid is anything else which is not Fermi liquid, we call it non-Fermi liquid. Both liquid is non-Fermi liquid? Hmm? Both liquid? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So, so since 1980s, starting from uh, discovery of high TC cuprates, uh, an increasing number, a large number of uh, uh, increasing large number of non forming liquid have been discovered. Uh, uh, say within the. Uh, uh, Many hundreds uh, 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 materials in the discuperate high DC cuprate family, and also in the uh, 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 so-called uh, uh, heavy fermion families, uh, close to quantum critical point, etc. Then there are uh, also other examples. So, um, yeah, um, for liquids, so I call it NFL, uh, have been found. So there are two classes. So one class is the high TC cuprate. In the normal state of the high TC cuprate, so I will explain a little bit what this normal state means. And, uh, and then another big class is this uh, so-called heavy fermion. Uh, uh, metals near some quantum critical point, or near some quantum phase transition quantum phase transition. Okay. <clears throat> so, so, so let me tell you a little bit about the high TC cuprate. Uh, um, uh, 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 Subir, I think, is going to talk about it uh, next Monday. So, so uh, 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 of course, it would be better that Subir already talked about it. And uh, so I will be very brief. So, so let me first uh, uh, mention a little bit about conventional superconductor. So conventional superconductor, uh, if you draw its phase diagram, it's very simple. So you just draw a temperature axis. And then there's some TC. So below the TC, the theory is superconducting. And the above TC, essentially, you have so-called normal state. And, uh, and this normal state is described very well by the Fermi liquid theory. And in fact, the Fermi liquid, the Fermi liquid theory uh, uh, gives you the physical mechanism why uh, 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 the uh, uh, superconductivity appears. He says, as I mentioned last time, uh, uh, um, the, uh, uh, the Fermi liquid, the only instability which Fermi liquid has is this Cooper pairing instability for Fermi on some opposite side of the Fermi surface. So, so, uh, so the uh, so Fermi liquid give a very beautiful explanation uh, and why the superconductivity occurs. So, so now let's look at the high TC cuprate. Then the then the phase diagram is actually very complicated, and I will not have time actually to explain uh, 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 details of this phase diagram. So, so I will uh, uh, just. Uh, uh, so, so one of the uh, 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 first discovery of the high TC cuprates is this uh, 
and lengthen them copper, copper <coughs> oxygen. And then if you dope this material by, say, reduce a little bit of this, lengthen them, and add a little bit uh, SR, SR uh, what is S? Uh, uh, strong, strong, strong team, that's right, yeah. SR, X. So what, what does this do, what this doping do, is that this thing is an is a insulator. It's what is called, so-called a what insulator. And it can be it, it described. So this has a layered structure. And uh, so what is, important, what is important for this material is a two-dimensional layer. And it consists of the, uh, two oxygen and one copper. So on that layer, you can imagine that uh, the two-dimensional layer is like a two-dimensional square lattice with uh, one hole on each, uh, on each lattice point. And, uh, so, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and the theory, uh, and, uh, because the strong repulsion between the, uh, between the holes, so that theory is actually a so-called water insulator, and it's actually an ant antiferromagnet. But now if you add a little bit of this uh, 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 strontium, so what this does is to add some holes to this uh, square lattice, half-filling square lattice. And uh, so these holes, now uh, you add these additional holes, and those holes can jump, say, between the lattice points. These additional holes can jump between the lattice points. And uh, so uh, uh, it turns out when you lower to, uh, to the lower temperature, it turns out that gives you the superconductivity. So, so the phase diagram of this is as follows. So the horizontal axis is x, is this x. So the uh, uh, vertical axis is the temperature. So at very small x, it does not do very much to the original structure. So you get uh, still the antiferromagnet here okay, for small x. But then uh, when you increase x, then you get such a Tc will increase with x and then eventually decrease. Okay. So, so here, uh, there's one place which the Tc is the highest. It's around the 0 0.15. So this is normally called the optimal doping. Which uh, 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 the temperature, which uh, uh, um, uh, 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 which the TC is the highest. So so here is about the uh, 39 K. So the, uh, around this height is point for for this material. And the, what's interesting about this uh, uh, phase diagram is that the uh, 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 in the region outside the superconducting region, so called the normal state region. And uh, 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 the physics is very different, depending on uh, 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 which part of this region you are So, So this part more or less like some kind of foamy liquid. And this part, it's uh, behave very, so this part is a, a, a metallic state, but behave very differently from a foamy liquid. So people just call it strange metal. Uh, uh, um. and, and this part is so-called pseudo-gap region, which I will not touch today. Uh, 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 Subir uh, may mention it uh, uh, next month. So, um, so this strange metal is a metallic state, but uh, but if you look at it, some dynamic uh, transport properties, etc., and uh, it actually differs very much from the predictions of Fermi liquids. So, so this is an example of non-Fermi liquids. So, one of the most striking behavior of this strange metal is so-called resistivity. It's, it's a, a linear dependence in resistivity. So if you plot, say let's do it at uh, x equal to 1.5, 1.5. If you plot the temperature uh, of the resistivity of this material, of this material, and then say, uh, so suppose this is about 300, 600, so, so this material starts superconducting at the 40K. So somewhere here, it starts superconducting. Uh, and then your, your resistivity drops to zero. And then, over a very wide range of temperature, you see a very beautiful linear behavior. OK. You see a very linear a beautiful linear behavior. Low proportion of T. So you remember uh, what we described last time for Fermi liquids. Uh, for, uh, in contrast, for Fermi liquids, rho behaves like rho zero plus something like T squared. 
Okay. So as I mentioned, this is related to the to uh, to the fact that for the Fermi liquid, due to the uh, uh, um, due to the uh, 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 kinematics constraints of the Fermi surface, uh, 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 that the scattering rate is proportional to the epsilon square uh, of the energy of the particle. So this T square, T square is directly related to that. So, so this linear behavior is very robust. It's, uh, it ranges from, say, from 4dK to more than 1,000k, uh, uh, many orders of magnitudes. And uh, it also uh, uh, appears almost in uh, all the cuprate materials. So, so by law, there are hundreds of them. It almost in, uh, appears in all the cuprate materials. So it's very robust and appears to be universal within this class of materials. And uh, of course, it's also very simple. Say, uh, 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 nothing can be simpler than linear behavior. Huh? I mean the uh, the mu, uh, maybe a few EV. I think. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. It, it, the Fermi energy, uh, the uh, the Fermi temperature is always much higher than this. So, um, and this behavior was discovered uh, uh, not uh, known after, say. The discovery of high-density high cuprate. High cup so this material was discovered in 1986. The Nobel Prize was immediately given in 1987, and uh, and uh, uh, maybe this was discovered in 1988 or 89. I think certainly in 88, maybe it's already known. And uh, and in <coughs> uh, but this is still not understood till till today. And uh, and if you look at uh, Joe's famous uh, TASI 92 uh, uh, lecture on the effective theory of uh, Fermi surface in 92, maybe many of you have not been born yet. And uh, <laughs> uh, 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 in 1992, and Joe maybe already plotted this plot. Uh, Joe already had this plot, and at that time was also a puzzling question, and it's still a puzzling question today. So how do you explain this linear behavior? And also, such linear behavior has been observed f uh, for those uh, uh, for for uh, for a variety of these hyperfermion metals near the quantum critical point, uh, near some quantum phase transition, and uh, so so it's not restricted to uh, just to cuprates, also to uh, uh, say other class of non-Fermi liquids. So uh, uh, you can also look at some other uh, behavior, say. Uh, uh, um, uh, so this is one example of the difference from the Fermi liquids. And one can also look at other behavior, say spin sensibility or other things, and uh, and again you get different behavior from the uh, uh, from the Fermi liquids. So so this linear resistivity plus say other anomalous behavior, other anomalous behavior says so one thing. That the uh, Landau's Fermi liquid theory must break down. Okay. So, so, so the experiment tells us now the Landau's Fermi liquid theory breaks down. So we can immediately ask. So as I mentioned, Landau's Fermi liquid theory have two postulates. One is that the ground state of the system uh, uh, um, is described by Fermi surface. And the second is that the small excitations of the Fermi surface are quasi particles and quasi holes. And those quasi particles and quasi holes are well defined at the low energies because their uh, decay rates become very, very small. Okay. So we can ask which postulate of this Fermi liquid theory breaks down? Uh, is, does this system still have a Fermi surface? Or whether they're still quasi particles? So you can immediately ask. So um, fortunately, uh, as I mentioned at the end of last lecture, um, maybe I didn't, uh, I didn't have time to do it uh, uh, to its justice. The, uh, I mentioned that the, uh, 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 the Fermi surface, actually, the existence of the Fermi surface and the small excitations can actually be directly probed using a photo emission experiments. So the photo emission experiment measure. 
So, uh, so I outline, uh, uh, I mentioned a little bit uh, what this uh, fault emission act, experiment did uh, in last lecture. So this fault emission experiment directly measures this, uh, say, so-called spectral function, which again, uh, I rushed a little bit at the end of last lecture, is the, uh, which is the imaginary part of the retarded function. So, so if there's a Fermi surface, and the, feature, and, and, and the key feature of the Fermi surface he said this, there are gapless excitations on the core dimensional one surface in your momentum space. Okay, so this is very different from the standard say, CFT, which you have a, a, a gapless excitation uh, uh, at a single point say in your momentum space, namely near the k equal to zero. So, so for me, so you have uh, uh, you have really a, 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 a whole a core dimensional one finite uh, surface uh, which you have gapless excitations. So what that does, which I showed last time, is that this will, those uh, uh, gapless excitations will, uh, uh, that cause a particle will give rise to, say, non ionic behavior in this AK omega as some finite value of a momentum shell in momentum space. So, 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 so experimentally, if you can measure this thing, and then just see whether this is, uh, say, become non analytic or singular at a certain value of momentum, uh, in the small frequency regime, then, then you can tell, uh, uh, that will give you a very good idea whether the system have a Fermi surface or not, and the, uh, the properties of the uh, uh, quasi particle, uh, 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 the properties of small excitations. So, so that's what people found. So you can do photo emission experiments uh, uh, um, on, the, on the cube rate. Actually, I don't remember whether they can do it directly in, in this material or not. Uh, not all materials you can easily do. Uh, anyway, you can do the photo emission experiment in the in the cube rate, and then that's what people found. He said they do find the quasi particle like peak. So it's, imp it's important that I say quasi particle like peak. Okay. Observed. Okay. Near some kf. Okay. So those peaks. Say uh, 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 some. Uh, 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 so maybe you can recall what the, uh, uh, what happens to the Fermi liquid theory. For the Fermi liquid theory, uh, what's happening is the following: If you plot a k omega as a function of omega, then for k smaller than k f, you see a peak like this. Uh, uh, I'm not drawing it very well. Say k minus k f. At this k minus k f, and with a width proportional to this square, uh, uh, proportional to the uh, to this square. So let me call this omega star. Uh, so the width proportional to omega star square. It's a very narrow width. And then when you k approach k f, this become higher and sharper. And then here become a data function, and then become things here. Okay. So uh, as you change your momentum. So so people observe similar. Similar quasi particle peaks, quasi particle like peaks for this, uh, uh, for this cube rate, say if they do photo emission experiments. So that suggests there is a Fermi surface, okay? Uh, at least the, uh, the first postulate of Landau seems to still work. But the interesting thing is that for the cube rate, the peak is actually rather broad. So, for example, the width of the peak is proportional is of all the omega star. So, uh, so let me again draw it here. So, so roughly, it's like following, and uh, and uh, and you see a peak, but the peak becomes very broad. Say, so suppose here is omega star is the value of the real value of the peak, and the width of the peak is of order omega star, and here is omega star square. So in here, the width is much, always much, much smaller than omega star, but here become comparable. Okay, here become comparable. So uh, uh, become comparable. So let's think about what this means. So let's think about what this means. So what we said before is that for the Fermi liquid case, this kind of peak is an indication you have a propagating particle behaves like epsilon k t minus gamma divided by two t, okay? So, so that peak is just uh, uh, describing you have a propagating particle. 
So, so similar things you can apply to this case. Uh, uh, say you can try to give similar interpretation to this case. But now, so, uh, so epsilon k is, 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 is what I call omega star there. Uh, 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 so now you can try to apply this to that broadened peak. But now there's a problem in, to interpret this as a particle. Because now gamma become comparable to epsilon k. So when this particle oscillates one cycle, it already decays. Okay? So, the, so before you even start looking for this particle, it already decays. So you cannot really call this a particle. Okay? You cannot really call this a particle. So, uh, um, so this, this also, from the transport behavior, etc., so we know that the coarser particle picture, cause a particle picture must break down. Okay. The cause a particle picture must break down. So, uh, so this is quite exciting. So, so, so now we see some brand new phenomenon that the, we have a Fermi surface without cause particles. So let me mention, so of course this uh, excited a great amount of interest, say how to explain uh, this behavior, et cetera. So, so, uh, so let me mention one uh, 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 um, discussion, uh, 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 one uh, 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 attempt to, to understand the phenological behavior of the cuprate. So this is so-called the marginal Fermi liquid theory by Varma et al. Which uh, was uh, developed in 1989. So, this marginal Fermi liquid theory can be considered as a phenomenological attempt to organize uh, different anomalous behavior uh, of the cuprates together, say, under a single framework. Yes? Can you, can you explain how this peak changes as you increase momentum? Ah, when you, momentum, uh, this just uh, uh, will, will uh, 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 the center of the peak will approach the omega equal to zero. But the peak will also become narrower uh, and become higher. But the key, uh, this is a very good question. Actually, it never becomes a data function. Yeah, even though it does become infinitely higher, uh, 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 but, uh, uh, but if you integrate the area be, uh, uh, below that, it's actually zero. Yeah, actually, I'm going to mention it a little bit more explicitly. So mathematically, I mean, once quasi is not well defined on the Fermi surface, yeah. is there you know, difficulty of defining even what you mean by a Fermi surface? Uh, no, no. The, the Fermi surface itself can be defined independent of the quota particles. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, fo the way we can define the Fermi surface is whether uh, your spectral function uh, uh, have some singular behavior, a non-analytical behavior, as some finite momentum shell. And that definition can be defined independent of the quota particles. But if, the, if there's no, uh, if, if the spectral function doesn't diverge, I mean, I, I guess yeah, uh, uh, the spectrum that uh, diverge have long and behavior there. It, 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 it just because the particle weight is zero now. So we will see examples of that. So, so, so let me mention a little bit about this uh, marginal Fermi liquid theory. So, so uh, of course, this is again a, a, a very big, a very long story, which I don't have time to really uh, 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 describe it. But, uh, but let me just uh, 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 give you a, a really rough uh, uh, idea. So the idea of this marginal Fermi liquid picture is the following. So from the uh, 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 from from what is the uh, 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 spe spectral uh, spectral uh, scopic uh, uh, measurement of the uh, of the uh, uh, cuprates, for example, like Raman scatterings and etc., they from Raman scattering people can 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 deduce certain properties, say, of the spin fluctuation and the charge fluctuation of the system. And, and those spin charge and, the, and, the, and the, those spin and the charge fluctuations exhibit very and also a very different behavior from the from the standard form liquids. So, so the idea of this uh, uh, one at all is they consider a free electron, just couple to some uh, quantum fluctuations, okay, which they consider as some kind of uh, 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 spin or charge fluctuations. And uh, so, so the postulate 
the form of this charge and spin fluctuations uh, uh, based on the, say, a, a, the experiments like Raman scattering. So, so they just put this uh, feature of this uh, 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 quantum fluctuation into the one loop diagram for the electrons. And then you can just calculate how this affects, say, the retarded green function of this electron. And then they found something which is quite interesting. They find the retarded green function become like something like this. Okay, so this E tilde is real, and the C is complex. So this C is complex. So let me contrast this with the behavior of the Fermi liquid theory. So in the Fermi liquid theory, you will get uh, <coughs> just uh, omega k minus k f minus one. Vf omega um, plus minus I say omega square some some number omega square so this would be the behavior of the Fermi surface so this is what I called gamma before okay so so what's striking about this behavior so what's striking about this behavior is that the uh, um, is the imaginary part in the downstairs. Okay. So, so, uh, so to look at the spectral function, you have to look at the imaginary part. Uh, uh, when you take the imaginary part of GR, so this is essentially controlled by the imaginary part of the downstairs. And the imaginary part of the downstairs, which is giving you the analog of this uh, uh, gamma in the Fermi liquid case, you see indeed something proportional to omega. Uh, 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 so uh, uh, you see that the gamma is proportional to omega. And also, uh, 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 interesting thing is that the uh, um, uh, uh, um, yeah, gamma is proportional to omega, and, uh, and this is first thing which seems to be. A, and, uh, and the second thing, if you look at the residue of this pole, residue vanishes at the Fermi surface. Logarithmically, so you can easily just convince yourself of doing a simple calculation. You can show that when you approach the Fermi surface, actually the uh, the residue uh, uh, vanishes uh, uh, logarithmically. Is that 2D huh? 2D, 2 spatial dimension. Yeah. It's a right? Yeah, it, it's uh, it's not uh, it's not a first principle calculation. It's a uh, phenomenology. Yeah. <laughs> uh, severe, you can. <laughs> yeah, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it, um, it, it, you can also say it's a phenological feat. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So. So let me point out another feature. Is that this omega log omega term is a real term, and this term actually dominates the real term in in here. Okay. So the way we de define the Fermi velocity is the relation between these two. Okay, the relative coefficient between these two. So now this term dominates over the linear real omega term. So so if you treat this the relation between them, then you see that the uh, formula velocity also goes to zero uh, as omega goes to zero. So, so the third thing is that the formula velocity also goes to zero uh, logarithmically as log omega. Yeah. Yes? Say that this is phenomenology, but Fermi liquid theory is also phenomenology. So how, how different is phenomenology? How, how worse is phenomenology? Yeah, so uh, <laughs> so so the thing is that this phenomenology, I think maybe uh, 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 yeah, let me give uh, Subir the pro the opportunity to criticize this here. <laughs> 
Yeah, just why? Why do you think this theory does not make sense? Yeah, yeah. So, so my own point of view. This is like a, a, a so so like a Landau theory. You can actually based on a few phenomenological inputs, and and then you can uh, start calculating other observables. And here the key thing is that the uh, 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 say say let's start this as a phenomenological input, and then let's try to start calculating other things. But the key is that now we don't know how to calculate any other things. It's because of the precisely because that the uh, 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 this thing uh, uh, the quasi particle picture breaks down, we don't know how to do anything. So so the only thing uh, 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 what they can do is they can try to postulate certain relation between different observables, etc. Say so they might be related, but they don't have a way to really calculate uh, from first principle in the in the say in the in the uh, self consistent way. Conductivity, for example. Yeah, in the yeah conductivity, for example, they argue. This linear behavior should be related to this linear conductivity, uh, uh, this linear resistivity, is because, for example, in the Fermi liquid case, we know they're, they're related. But of course, this reason is not, uh, it's not on firm ground. It's because precisely because of the uh, quasi particle picture breaks down, uh, uh, you can no longer make such kind of statements. Uh, but, but the level of this, uh, uh, this agrees, this appears to agree with the experiment reasonably well. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and it does uh, uh, package various phenomenological uh, 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 results on the single. Sorry, which experiment you created? The, the Fermi matrix? Or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, okay, if you were to ask me, I would say two things. Uh, so, the original explanation was that you could just keep on saturating. There was some spectrum cost in it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, but that by itself is okay. That by itself, let's just say, uh, let's take this as a phenomenological input, and, uh, and let's take this as a phenomenological input, and then we can derive this, and then from here, if you can derive other things, then that's a huge success. But, uh, but, but of course, the, uh, just pre precisely because of this, you cannot really do things uh, self-consistently. I, 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 I think, uh, right, 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 but say, yeah, I think we can debate this <laughs> after was all with Obama or with Abrahams, and, uh, but, uh, but according uh, uh, um, to there, I think maybe 2003 paper, they say that uh, you can subtract various things and then they agree very well. Anyway, we can, yeah, I think this is not the main point here. Uh, hmm? Okay. Yeah. Good. So, so uh, 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 anyway, so uh, so so this is the uh, and, and they argue this behavior is correlated with linear resistivity with the correlated with the row T. But of course, there's no way one can really make a reliable uh, 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 argument. Just when do I have to? Five. Five. Oh, 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 I have lots of time. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Okay. One second. Uh, 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 did I finish what I want to say? Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, so, so they postulate this thing. This thing is essentially some kind of two-point, uh, uh, two-particle two function. So, so this is some kind of a charge, uh, 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 charge density, charge density, uh, a two-point function, or, or, or it's a spin density two-point function. So, so this you get from the, say, uh, say uh, experimental input then they put into here. Yeah, uh, 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 that's, uh, uh, that's part of their input. It's, um, yeah. Uh, there's uh, there's no uh, 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 systematic way to calculate it. Yeah, yeah. The hydrodynamic is also uh, uh, they also had some attempt. To do, uh, they also tried to do hydrodynamics. In, in yeah, I just say 
once you don't have the quasi particle picture, doing hydrodynamics is also very hard. It's also very hard. Yeah, you agree. Yeah, that's by it's, yeah, that's by itself it's not a bad thing. Just just you have a good way, just you have a good way to package different exper uh, experimental without the, uh, uh, the gather. Of course, is already uh, uh, a positive step. But but certainly I won't call this uh, 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 say a theory yet. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's it's a little bit different. I think this is the uh, uh, um, this is the finite frequency. Uh, uh, um, uh, yeah. So uh, so you have to uh, in order to calculate this diagonal, you have to cal uh, you have to postulate the uh, momentum and uh, and uh, momentum and the frequency dependence, and uh, and that you can get some hint from some other experiment like Raman scattering, etc. The fluctuation of somehow always put in whatever the resistance is. Uh, it's it's not clear. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a packaging. It's a, it's an, it's a, it's a packaging. Yeah, it's a it's a packaging. Yeah, I'm not claiming uh, anything more than that. But uh, uh, but the thing I I think it's a, in my own personal point of view I think it's a nice packaging. Uh, um, of course, it would be nice to do more. So so that's why I really did the SFT. <laughs> So, 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 so let me uh, also mention that the uh, similar behavior, strange metal behavior, also observed in, in this uh, uh, so-called heavy fermion uh, metals near the uh, quantum critical points. So, uh, so this uh, example, which, uh, 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 and let me just draw a particular uh, uh, sample, which is called this uh, uh, YB. Uh, so how do we call it in English, YB? Turbine. The turbine? Okay. Yeah, uh, and uh, and uh, ruling. Uh, okay. Yeah. Anyway, so so if you turn on a magnetic field, so in the zero magnetic field, this material at zero temperature is a is a is a is an antiferromagnetic phase. Okay. So and it's again uh, antiferromagnetic uh, in the antiferromagnetic. It's a conductor, uh, 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 but it's antiferromagnetic. Uh, uh, and uh, and uh, and then. And then you find that when you turn on the, uh, yeah, yeah, then at some TC, it become, uh, so at the zero magnetic field, uh, uh, there's some TC, it become antiferromagnetic. And, and then you find you can tune the magnetic field, and then this uh, critical temperature to go to this uh, antiferromagnetism uh, eventually goes to zero at some critical HC. And then this defines some, uh, 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 a quantum phase transition for you, this point. So, so it turns out, uh, and now you have seen familiarly, uh, uh, this Subir's diagram, that the near this quantum critical point separates into uh, uh, roughly three regions, and the tendal in this region is like fermi liquid, and uh, this region behaves uh, again like strange metal. 
and then, uh, and then this region also behaves uh, like uh, a Fermi liquid. Uh, it's a, it's a itinerant uh, uh, spin density wave. So, uh, um, so, so uh, also there was some suspicion. So, so related to this example, there are also some suspicion that for the uh, for the uh, uh, cuprates, maybe there are also some kind of uh, uh, strange, uh, some quantum critical points sitting here at the optical doping. In particular, uh, 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 this kind of uh, 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 fine shaped region uh, separated into three regions, very similar uh, uh, to let's say uh, to the typical uh, uh, quantum critical point uh, uh, phase diagram uh, 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 crossover region, which uh, uh, Subir mentioned earlier today. Yeah, sorry? Is this, is this heavy Fermi material? Yeah, material yeah, right yeah, 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 yeah. And are these 2 plus 1 or 3 plus 1 essentially? This one, this particular one, I think it's 2 plus 1. Is that right? Uh, yeah, this particular one is 2 plus 1. Yeah, it's, uh, it's roughly 2 plus 1. Yeah. So, so, actually, I forgot what I want to say. Um, uh, I want to say something. Um, okay. Uh, anyway, I forgot. Um, so, um, okay. So let me summarize. So, so the uh, so so from here and here, we see a very interesting phenomenon. Is that we see Fermi surface without quasi particles. Okay. And uh, so, so here is the challenge. How do we describe low energy behavior of a such system? How do we derive, uh, 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 say, uh, say, how do we derive such kind of thing from first principle? And how do we derive the transport like linear recessivity from first principle? And more generally, can we argue such kind of fixed points? Say, presumably, this is again. If you think from the RG uh, towards the Fermi surface, and uh, presumably uh, this should describe some other, should, this should be described by some other fixed points uh, 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 other uh, than the Fermi liquid. So, so how can we phrase uh, uh, the language uh, to describe such a fixed point? Okay, so this is uh, the uh, theoretical challenges we are facing. So, so again, let's go back to remember the power of the Fermi liquid theory. So the power of Fermi liquid theory is that it, this is a theory which can make predictions without knowing the precise details of your uh, microscopic series. And uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's only depend on a few phenological inputs, uh, 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 and, and then you can predict all the low energy behavior. So here, it would be, like, it would be nice that we can develop a theory, just like Fermi liquid theory, but it applies to a Fermi surface without quasi particles. And, uh, and again, uh, uh, and ideally, that theory should not depend on the details of the microscopic in, uh, interactions. And then, uh, and then just we can uh, develop a framework just to deal with the low energy phenomenon. Okay. So, so again, that's the place which, which we think the ADSFT can play a very important role. It's because the, uh, uh, obviously uh, many of these strongly coupled gauge theories described by gravity, uh, uh, they're very far away in terms of the UV description from the from condensed matter systems, uh, from typical condensed matter systems. So, so what I want to show in my lectures is that the, despite very different difference in the UV structure uh, 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 of those systems uh, uh, arise from the ADSFT, actually they give rise to very similar behavior in, in terms of the infrared phenomena associated with the quasi particle without Fermi surface. Okay, so uh, so, uh, 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 so, uh, so I'm going to show that, that such kind of example can arise from the gravity approach, and in the gravity approach we can do systematic calculation of such kind of quantity and the resistivity, and uh, and uh, and to show uh, and to find examples of the Fermi surface without quasi particles. Um, we can we can get something uh, uh, qualitatively. Yeah, so from gravity, you can also uh, uh, reproduce uh, uh, examples of Fermi surface with quasi particles, and then and uh, yeah, you can re uh, yeah you can also have a, a system with quasi particles, 
then the then the most of the Landau thing actually applies, even though the detailed scaling behavior is actually different. Yeah, so once you have quasi particles, then all these non doubt tricks, they they, they in principle, can be applied. Which, which solution are you applying to? Yeah, just uh, uh, for example, in our case, new greater than one half behavior. That's not no, that's not for manipulation, but there's a quasi particle. And if you look at the transport, the etc., everything can be described by quasi particles. And they can develop a quasi particle theory. <laughs> I, I mean, that's. No, 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 no. <laughs> 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 so, <yeah. laughs> uh, uh, I think Spear, it's a, it's a, I think it's an exaggeration, uh, what you are saying. Uh, 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 we will see, we will see, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, 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 yeah, I'm not many, uh, making any judgment. Uh, uh, I will only going to present the facts to you, and then you will judge. <laughs> Sorry? I mean, are the probability um, of the stretch methods yeah. similar or not? Yeah, uh, they're very similar. I mean, for this two, uh, this diagram, but the stretch method. Oh, 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 between these two? Yes. Between these two, there's some common behavior. For example, here, uh, the resistivity is t square. Here is t. Here is t square. So similarly, with things here, here the Fermi liquid phase gives you a t square resistivity. Here we are here t, et cetera. So, uh, so there are some similarities, but of course, the other properties are not exactly identical. But, uh, but, uh, but they share a certain uh, 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 common IR feature. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Yeah, there's no quasi particle, just period. You can see it from the optical conductivity. Uh, if there's a quasi particle, then, uh, 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 for example, if there are charged quasi particles, then you should see a transport peak in the uh, uh, optical conductivity, but you don't see it. So between the stretch metal and the Fermi liquid theory, there's some smooth crossover of the resistivity? Uh, uh, from the, yeah, yeah, here is a smooth crossover. That's right. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Sorry, say it again. To, to get to, to the phase transition to be yeah. no, uh, to be real phase transition. To be, I mean, that's not real. You mean? I mean, two plus one dimension you can really have. Ah, ah, of course, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, in the end, this is embedded in the three-dimensional system. Right, uh, uh, that's, that's yeah, that's important. Right. Yeah, and yeah, this is not generally in two dimension, even though the important physics. And which relevant for the uh, superconductivity come from the two-dimensional thing, but uh, 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 but uh, uh, but this is a three-dimensional material. So if you study only two plus one dimensional field theory, yeah. how would you like conclude that there could be a conductivity? Oh, maybe uh, uh, um, uh, that's a good question. Uh, uh, um, yeah, then the story will be somewhat different. Yeah, but the physics will be s uh, similar. It just the uh, it just there will be a. a, a, a yeah, the, uh, uh, whatever the physics will be still similar. Yeah, just the, uh, uh, the, uh, the precise nature of the phase transition will be different. Right. Yeah, we can, we can, we can, we can, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so, so I think I had a too long introduction. Uh, uh, um. One more question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, um, so, so we haven't uh, uh, successfully. Uh, uh, there are some uh, ideas one can uh, uh, construct some doping parameter. For, uh, for example, using the uh, uh, the recent trick uh, developed by by, uh, by Joe and Tom Fokler, and uh, one may do something like uh, a doping. But uh, yeah, but uh, but in the example I will describe in detail, uh, uh, there's no such thing as a doping parameter. Yeah, we're just sitting at one point. Any other questions? So you still, do you have to remove the and the Under the, uh, under the superconducting dome? Yeah. yeah, in the superconducting, here, this is, inside the superconducting phase, it's more or less the superconductor, we understand it very well. It's a D-wave superconductor, but, uh, but we understand the physics reasonably well. 
And uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, the uh, uh, the puzzling thing is here. And just like in the conventional superconductivity, the way to understand uh, 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 the conventional superconductivity is to understand the Fermi liquids, and then you understand where the superconductivity comes from. So here, many people uh, uh, is widely believe that in order to understand the mechanism of this superconductivity, uh, maybe we should understand the strange metal first. Yes. Sorry? Ah. Uh, 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 you mean just the weight? Be, uh, the weight becomes zero? Uh, yeah, just say, uh, um, say this peak does become infinitely high and narrow. It just, uh, if you integrate the area uh, 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 below the. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, it, it just, uh, the precise mathematical statement, if you try to solve the poles here and trace the pole moving in the complex plane as you approach the Fermi surface, the, uh, when you reach precise at the Fermi surface, the residue goes to zero. The residue goes to zero. And it's the residue here which take imaginary part to give you that, the, uh, uh, the data function weight. Yeah, uh, that's another way to say there's no quasi particle. Yeah, uh, 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 so as I mentioned last time, that this quasi particle weight, in some sense, in the Fermi liquid case, corresponding to the overlap of the electron wave function to the quasi particle wave function. And now, if this is zero, it's another way to say maybe there's no uh, quasi particle. Okay, so so uh, so now I will go to ADSFT. Uh, so so before uh, before talking about the uh, uh, ADSFT, let me just uh, uh, um, um, yeah, maybe I don't. Okay, okay, I will directly go to ADSFT. Good. So, so in order to, so this is not very ideal. So in order to um, describe, say, a Fermi surface, we first need to construct a finite density of fermions, say, uh, and, uh, and construct the gravity dual for that. So, uh, so that's what we, I will do next. So that's what I will do next. So, so now we do, let's do uh, ADSFT for finite density system. For A, finite density system. Okay, so, so we would like to uh, construct finite density system. Uh, finite from, so we would like to construct the finite fermionic density. Okay. Fermionic density. So as a first step for that, we will just first uh, 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 construct the finite density system and then worry about its fermion, uh, uh, fermionic nature a little bit later. So, so how do we first construct, uh, so first uh, a finite density, just to have a finite density system. So the simplest way to construct a finite density system is that the, uh, take your favorite, say, CFT. It doesn't matter which CFT you want to take. Just take your favorite CFT. Take a d-dimensional CFT with a gravity dual. And uh, also with a global, uh, a global U1 symmetry. Global U1 symmetry. Then the simplest way to get, get a finite density system is just put the system at the finite chemical potential for this U1. So let me call this uh, uh, chemical, uh, uh, finite chemical potential mu uh, for this U1. So this will give us finite density. So this will give rise to finite charge density.
this will give rise to a valid charge density. So, so now, so let's talk about how do we, so now we want to write down the gravity dual for such a system. So, so this is easy to do. So this was uh, first done by Chamberlain at all. So, so uh, 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 immediately, say five seconds after the ADSFT was discovered. So, so, so the way to do this is very simple. So, so let me just re remind you a few uh, 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 facts of the, uh, say, the uh, uh, correspondence between the boundary and the park. So the U1 global symmetry, uh, typically uh, for this CFT, we are familiar with this, uh, some kind of R symmetry. So this is typically mapped to a U1 gauge symmetry in the park. So the current, the conserved current, the map to the gauge field. Uh, to map the gauge fields. And, uh, and also, so many people have discussed, maybe started with, maybe starting with the, uh, maybe pe many people might have already discussed in this school, that at the finite temperature, if you put the system at the finite temperature, so, so, so this gives you just a swash of black hole, at the Hawking temperature equal to the, uh, uh, to the temperature. And now we can just add the finite charge density here. So add some finite charge density. And then it's just corresponding to make this black hole charged. So this is just, uh, uh, you already have a black hole because one in finite temperature, and if you put in the finite charge density, you just make a black hole charged. And now we can just take t equal to zero limit. Say if you want to construct the finite density system at t equal to zero, so you just take the t equal to zero limit. So in this side, it's very easy to do. And uh, so this side turns out that this is dual to so-called extremal black hole. So extremal black hole uh, is a, a black hole with a maximum possible charge, okay, and the, uh, and it has a, a, a zero Hawking temperature. So extremal charge black hole, and it ha uh, and it have a zero Hawking temperature. So so now we have established that the uh, a, a finite density system at t finite charge density system at t equal to zero can be described by extremal black hole. And, and then if we want to do it at finite temperature, both finite temperature, finite charge density, then we just consider, say, an uh, 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 ordinary charge black hole. Yes? Huh? Uh, they call it extreme black hole? Uh, n n how do we see it? Yeah, so, so, so this side, no problem, right? So, so this side, you take this black hole, so I will do this explicitly a little bit later, but, but you can work out its Hawking temperature depending on the parameter of the system. And then you just dial your parameter so that that Hawking temperature goes to zero. And then that gives you a, a charge black, a, a extreme black hole. Yeah. So we will do this a little bit more explicitly. Okay. So let's just do this now. Let's just do this now. Sorry? If it's, if it's in the first step. Yeah. I just want to know if we study the external block, external block from the beginning. Yes. And that could be different. We take the limit to go to zero with the finite temperature. Are they the same? Oh, yeah, it's the same. It's the same. But of course, for certain observables, t equal to zero limit should be done uh, uh, with some care. And uh, but uh, yeah, but it's uh, yeah. Uh, uh, that's um, yeah. Okay. So so uh, so now, now let me do this. So like, uh, 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 to be specific, let me now do the d, d equal to three. So so in order to write down a black hole solution, let me just write down the action so that I tell you. Uh, uh, so so in order to write down a charge black hole, so so the only thing we need to worry about is this gauge field. 
and the gravity. So, so then you can immediately write down the, uh, uh, the action for gauge field coupled to gravity. So I will do three dimensional boundary, then corresponding to the four dimensional bulk. And then this is a, a, a rich scalar. And this R is the curvature radius of ADS. So my notation is always, so R is the curvature radius of ADS. This is a rich scalar. This GF is some kind of dimensionless coupling constant for F, for the gauge field. So, so I will always use the following notation. The Bach coordinate will be Xm, will be equal to R. X mu is the boundary coordinates. And the boundary coordinate in 10 is written as T and X, OK? And sometimes I will use Xi to denote these spatial coordinates. And so also I will, from now on, set this GF t equal to 1 just by changing the normalization of your gauge field. So, you can write oh, 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 this is just a normalization to make this is a dimensionless number. Yeah. So, so, so in order to describe such a finite density system, so in order to describe this finite density system, we need a black hole solution. In principle, what we need, we need the solution of, so if we, uh, 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 let me call this now Grandian 1. So this uh, should lead the solution of 1. So of course, you don't have to find a black hole solution, but just turned out that the only solution you can find is a black hole. Uh, and this also follows from these arguments. And uh, so we want to find the solution of 1, which have following, uh, following properties is, should be spherically symmetric say, rotationally symmetric, because we have not break the rotational symmetry. And it should also be static. And uh, also should be characterized by two parameter, say, by the chemical potential and the temperature. So we can also trade the, uh, uh, the, uh, the temperature uh, uh, by the horizon sides. Okay. So we often trade the t uh, Hawking temperature by the, hor uh, the horizon side, which we call R0. So, so you can, so that's what we want. And, and this, emit, this essentially uniquely determines your metric can be written as follows. Minus h dt square plus 1 over h d r square and uh, r square divided by r square dx square. Yeah, maybe I will. Okay, let me just do this. So, so we want, so let me do it more explicitly. R square F, so let me call this R square F. So, so, so for this to be a black hole, then F has to go to zero at some value of R zero, at R zero. And in order for this to describe a charged system, we also need the electric field. Because if the black hole is charged, then you should, they should have electric field. Then, then the gauge field corresponding to this electric, uh, the potential for this gauge field can be written as one minus r zero divided by r. Okay. So let me uh, make a few remarks on the form of this uh, gauge field. So, so this form of this gauge field can essentially be determined without doing any calculation. So, so first. So this can be determined by the following three aspects. First, it said when we add the chemical potential in the boundary, we are adding a term mu j zero, okay. And that implies that the, from the standard story of ADSFT, uh, because j zero is dual to AT, that means that AT should go to mu as R goes to infinity. Okay, this just defines the source which appear in the action. So that uh, determines this m uh, one of uh, mu here. And also, you can easily convince yourself due to the structure of this black hole. Uh, actually, when you write down your Gauss law, uh, this f actually does not play any role. 
So you just actually get the Gauss law in flat space. So that tells you AT should be over 1 over R. And then you want the gauge field to be non singular horizon. At the horizon. So that essentially, uh, uh, that means AT has to go to 0 because the GTT. Uh, uh, goes to zero there, and the upper GTT become, uh, uh, blows up, so, so you want AT goes to zero. Uh, so this is regularity. Uh, uh, and then that uniquely determines the form of this gauge field. And now this becomes very simple problem to solve. We just need to solve for F. So, so the kind of theory actually we start with, so here we have, I, I said we need Two parameters, one specified mu, one specified t. But actually, since we start with the CFT, so the fact we start with the CFT translates to the fact that when this metric goes to infinity, it should go back to the, oh, I should have R square. Uh, 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 also, you should, uh, 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 for this to describe a CFT, then you need this metric actually to go to the asymptotic. ADS uh, as R goes to infinity, so that means the FR uh, ha has to go to one. Okay. So so I, so I will assume that FR goes to one. So uh, so this will go to asymptotic ADS. So because the theory is actually because the underlying theory is scale invariant, actually one of the parameter mu and the t is redundant. Because in the dimensional, uh, because in the scale invariant theory, only the ratio of them uh, is physically meaningful. One of them just defines the unit for you. Okay. Uh, uh, the charge is inside the uh, is inside the F. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's controlled, uh, but it's also indirect controlled by mu there. So, so, so we can actually, in actually, in this metric, actually R zero is a redundant parameter. We can actually scale it away. So we can actually scale because of scale invariance. We can scale R zero away. That means we can set the horizon just at R equal to one. Okay. So this, from now on, this will be my horizon. And uh, and all the coordinate will become dimensionless. And uh, so uh, so the way to achieve that is you do the scaling r go to r times r zero. Say t x go to t x r squared divided by r zero, and then a t. So if you do the scaling, you can completely get rid of r zero as it should be. Because the uh, um, the series scale invariant, there should be only one parameter rather than two parameters. So, so now let me just write down the explicit form of F under this rescaled uh, uh, metric. So, so now I can write down this F. So after this rescaling, everything will be uh, uh, scaling uh, uh, will be dimensionless. So you can write, find the ds divided by r square is equal to minus r square f dt square. So r square have went away, and r square dx square plus r square f, and f is equal to one plus mu square to the r four minus one plus mu square r cube. So at is still as before. Now the horizon at one become like this. Okay, so you can easily check yourself. If we put i equal to one here, this is zero, so that's your horizon. And now you can calculate the Hawking temperature. I think Sun described it uh, maybe the other day. So you can calculate the Hawking temperature using the standard trick. So we'll not do it here. So if you calculate the Hawking temperature, you find it's given by three minus mu square divided by four pi. Okay. You can work out also work out the charge density, mass density, uh, energy density, and uh, and entropy density, etc. To save time, I'm not writing it down. 
Okay. So, so keep in mind that the only the ratio of the t and the mu is a, is a physical uh, a meaningful quantity. So now let's consider the, the t equal to zero limit. Now let's consider t equal to zero limit. So when you take t equal to zero limit, if you look at this behavior, uh, this equation, we want sign this to be zero. So that means mu have to go to square root three. Okay. So this just means that we are working with a unit which the mu is square root three. So in this limit, and f become one plus three plus r four minus four divided by r cube. So there's something interesting happening with this thing. So can some of you say why this is interesting? When I drink my water. So why this is interesting? Near the horizon, this is constant. Hmm. Yeah, that's. Yeah, that's the same thing here. Uh, okay, okay, it's not so obvious. Okay. That's right. Here, actually, it turns out that this thing is proportional to r minus 1 square and then plus r something. r to the 4. Yeah, it turns out that there's a double. So previously, there's a single root for f equal to 0. Now, in this limit, it becomes a double root. As we will see, as we will see in a few minutes, this is actually very crucial. So, so in particular at the horizon, so f become six r minus one square plus four the r minus one cube term. So let me make a few remarks. In this limit, let me do it. Yeah, let me do it here. Uh, yeah, since I don't have much time, let me just do it here. So, so what's important here? Yeah, let me still do it here. Save some time. The horizon side remain finite. So when I take this extremal limit, when I take this t equals to zero limit, nothing singular happens. So the horizon remains at i equal to one, etc. So so horizon side remains finite. So it actually tells you that there's actually finite entropy. Finite zero t entropy. Entropy density. Okay, so this is uh, 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 very interesting. The system have a finite entropy density at zero temperature. And another very important feature of this uh, 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 geometry is that let's look at the consequence of why uh, the consequence of, of this developer double root. Okay, so what this means? Or oh, I should not have it. Maybe. Okay, so. So near the horizon. So when we are very close to the horizon, then I can use this for my f. Then the metric become okay plus higher order corrections in powers of r minus one. So notice this metric. Something nice happens. First, the prefactor of dx become independent of the space-time coordinates, become a constant. And the second, some of you already have, may have noticed, this thing is actually an ADS2. Okay, so so let me make it more explicitly so that the so uh, so, uh, uh, so if I said psi equal to one divided by six r minus one. Then this metric become 
then this metric becomes um, I think I'm a little bit too slow. So th then this metric becomes R Q square divided by psi square minus dt square plus the R square or a d a d psi square plus dx square. Uh, 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 R square. Is, is your R is always greater than one. Uh, uh, which R? Yeah, R is always greater than one. That's right. Uh, and let me set this uh, to be. Yeah, let me. Uh, 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 let me set. So the, so the S square become this and psi equal to six. Yes, R is always greater than one. Yeah, let me only uh, uh, consider the region outside the black hole. So this R2 now becomes the curvature radius of the ADSF2 become R divided by square root of 6. OK? So this square root of 6 is actually very important, will be very important later. So, so they, they may mention that this is smaller than R. This actually have, will have far-reaching far consequences uh, uh, later in terms of the dynamics of the theory. So for the moment, this is just a curious uh, square root of 6 factor. So, so this ADS2 has a SL2R symmetry, including scaling. So including scaling, you can sc scale psi and t together. And then the matrix is still involved. You can easily see that. And, uh, and, uh, and you don't scale x. So uh, uh, you don't scale x. So, so, the, so now let's think about what this means. Uh, so, uh, so maybe I need uh, five more minutes. So, 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 so let's think about what this means. So it tells us an uh, extreme black hole is really like a domain wall, which interpolates between ADS4 so, so the extreme of black hole is like a domain wall which interprets, say, say this is the boundary, tx direction, uh, 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 ADS4, and the uh, real horizon region, which is ADS2 times, ADS, uh, times R2. Okay, so, so, so this uh, 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 spatial direction becomes completely coupled with the time and the radial direction. So this is like a domain wall which interpolates between the two. Okay. In particular, in particular, um, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so here's horizon, and i equals one. And ADS two times r two corresponding will blow blow up the region uh, uh, near the horizon. So physically, uh, we, we can understand a little bit better what this near horizon region means. So here, when playing this game, I'm just, I just directly inserted the behavior of f, say, at near i equal to 1. So, so in this formula, there are certainly higher order corrections. Okay. But there is a systematical procedure to actually decouple all the higher order terms here. To decouple all the higher terms, so, uh, uh, similar to the uh, to, uh, similar to the original Mathesinus argument to decouple ADS five uh, from the full Disriebrain metric. So here you can formally uh, here you can define a scaling limit. So here you can def uh, define a formal scaling limit. So physically, we can isolate. Isolate the near horizon ADS2 times R2 region. I consider some kind of scaling limit. Okay. Uh, 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 by considering the following scaling limit. By scaling like this. So we consider, so we define R minus 1 equal to lambda. R2 squared divided by psi, and then 
Yeah, I minus one uh, 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 goes to that. And then t given by lambda minus one, t tilde. Okay? And then we consider the limit which lambda goes to zero and with t tilde and the psi finite. So this is a familiar uh, uh, Mount Sinai game. And if you do that, then you find the all the higher all the corrections, they just go to zero in the lambda goes to zero limit. And then you really isolate this ADS2 region. But but this argument is not a formal say uh, it's not a formal argument to tell why uh, uh, yeah but this argument has a very important purpose is that this scaling argument this scaling argument also tells us the following thing yeah so if you do that you can then you get the generating here uh, without any uh, uh, without any higher order things so so this argument also serves the following important purpose in that uh, um, for finite t, for finite t tilde, in the lambda goes to zero limit corresponding to infinite t, corresponding to t goes to infinity limit as lambda goes to zero in this uh, uh, scaling limit. So, so, so this tells us the Leo horizon, uh, to go to the Leo horizon ADS2 region, it's a low, low frequency limit. Because t goes to infinite from the boundary theory language. Okay. So that tells us from your uh, four dimension uh, from your three dimensional field theory point of view, if you go to really the low frequency, you should see the physics which is dual to this ADS2 region. Okay. And, uh, and, uh, and it's also uh, important to notice that here it's only low frequency, no frequency limit. The momentum can be anything because the momentum now decoupled with a constant uh, a prefactor. So momentum can be anything, but if you go to f no frequency limit and, uh, and, uh, and then you go to this ADS2 region. So this is an example of this IRUV connection. Of, uh, 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 of ADSFT, in that the uh, uh, um, in that when we go to low frequency limit, we go to the horizon. So, so also this structure have a very beautiful boundary theory interpretation. Uh, 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 yeah, I think I have to finish this today, otherwise I don't have my bottom line. So this have a very important interpretation from the uh, boundary theory point of view. So in the boundary theory, in the boundary theory, we start, say, with a CFT, three. Uh, actually, the dimension is not important. You can do it for any dimensions, uh, and just for specific, and uh, 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 three dimension. And then when you're taking a chemical potential, you're corresponding to add such a term in your Lagrangian. So this is your original, say, boundary theory action. And, uh, and, uh, and when you, say, when you add, uh, attending on the chemical potential corresponding to add such a term to your, to, your, to your theory. So notice that the J0 has dimension two. Has dimension two. Uh, the reason, uh, so J0 is the charge density. So charge is dimension this. Density, so this is dimension two. So J zero never have any enormous dimension, and uh, and so always have a dimension which is one less than the space time dimension. So so this is smaller than three, and that means this is a relevant perturbation. So the theory will flow. So the theory will flow, and also this is a dimensional parameter. So this is a relevant coupling, and the the theory will flow. And uh, so. So this will flow. Will, so this will break the conformal symmetry. Will break the scaling symmetry because this is a dimensional parameter. And also, uh, because we single out this J zero, this also breaks the Lorentz symmetry. Lorentz symmetry. So there's no longer symmetry between the space and time direction. 
So, so what this box picture tells us, so what this box picture tells us is that the theory flows to an infrared fixed point which is described by this ADS2. Okay. So this tells us that from the boundary, so this is Bach. So this tells us in the boundary we have CFT3 in the UV. When we turn on this relevant coupling, this will flow. And in the bulk, say asymptotically we have ADS4. So this extremal black hole is, a, say, some domain wall interpret this ADS4 with this ADS2 times S2 times R2. So this tells you us this must, so these two dual to each other. So this tells us this infrared fixed point of this flow must be dual to a theory in ADS2 times R2. So this should be dual to the 0 plus 1 dimensional CFT, dual to ADS2. So R2 now becomes just a spectator, similar to the role played by, say, S5 in ADS5 times S5. Okay. So, so this tells us at finite density, the theory, when you go to infrared, it flows to 0 plus 1 dimensional safety. So the R2 is non-compact. Yeah, it's uncompact. So no, 0 plus 1 dimensional, yeah, it's, it's fine. It, yeah, we have a continuum of operators labeled by the momentum. Yeah, 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 this is the, uh, uh, I, I just have one final finishing touch. Okay, yeah, so, uh, so let me just emphasize the symmetry of this zero plus one dimensional CFT is a purely many body effect. Have nothing to do with the symmetry of your original theory. So that theory, that symmetry is broken by your finite chemical potential. And then, but due to some complicated many body dynamics, when you go to infrared, now you have this emergent SL2R symmetry. So this is a very powerful statement. So this is some very complicated strongly coupled theory. But somehow, but just by looking at the geometry, we can read such a very longitudinal statement. And then we will see next time that the, the, this has very important consequences for the, the energy dynamics of the theory, including the behavior of the Fermi surface. So we'll stop here. Thank you. Yes? Sorry? Does this domain work You mean whether we can deform this uh, solution? Yeah, yeah. It's like if you consider a euler domain work, it's like this type of equation. Oh, right. No, no, no. This is not uh, a, a not domain work in that sense. Yeah.